Okay, hello. Welcome to my talk, which is called Small Utilities to Remember. I'm Vladimir Ayani, who currently works for a company called Agrapools. We do tool to manage the social networks for social agencies, and I'm responsible for testing, QA, some RD as well. So, uh, what is this talk about? It's uh, about the libraries, which probably won't fit uh, full-time sessions, but it's probably good to know them. And as I said, I do a lot of testing, so most of the libraries will be dedicated to testing. But at the end, I will show you some, at least one, which is pretty useful everywhere. Okay, this is the, I will publish the, the slides. I will tweet the, the link to the slides after that and to the example repository. And there is a list of all the, all the libraries I'm going to mention today, but most of it will be just live coding. And this is where you can find the kind of start, uh, starter project to start playing with the libraries I've mentioned here. Okay. So let's get started. So first one, I think even in the last or last but one session, there was a discussion, you know, for example, how to, how to mock HTTP servers. There's tools like Varmock and probably lot of others, but if you just want to spin up a very simple HTTP server, you know exactly what is the what is the path you want to match. You want you know what to respond. So you can, for example, launch use this thing called Erzat server, and you can see it has pretty nice DSL to define what you expect from the from the server to happen. So, for example, if you issue and get request with this specific path, it will respond something. So it will respond with the body of hello world and with some expected content type. And I have also the test for it, if it works. It is <coughs> so you don't have to trust me or you have, but it do have passed in here. So, and you can do a lot of other cool stuff. For example, you can match queries. So, if you say queries, and run it again, it will fail because you didn't you didn't pose the the expected parameter in there. And what's even better, it gives you quite a nice explanation of what happened. So okay, you just see the get request, it the path matches, but the query string doesn't match. So we can do just say okay, that was me. Run it again. And now it passes. So what are what are the typical scenarios to use this? It's just for example if you mock some any any external API service. So what I actually do, for example, I just call the service. I don't I'm not using Varmock or whatever. Uh, like VCR, what was the name? Um, beta Betamax, I think was the Java version. So I just do it. I don't know. I just do it from. I'm not showing this, but I'm just using you know like IntelliJ get whatever so there's you know built-in http server here or http client so i just use this one save the save the response from the server and use it in my test and this is getting us to the other tool which i just simply called fixed and this is bit redone so basically the main change is i'm not reading i'm not putting the message in here, but instead of I'm just reading from the file system. And what I figured out, or what was kind of biggest pain for me, is when you have this kind of fixtures for your files, it ends up in a big mess. So you, what do you usually do? Just say, okay, 
like fixed pack dot class or dot get resource a stream and read it from from the file system from source source test resources like here. So what does fix actually do is This is sorry. No, okay, sorry. I don't know how to make this stuff bigger, but you can see there is a fixed for the fixed pack, and you just basically group the resources with the name of the specification. What you can do. You can see this is the JUnit rule. So if I don't have my fixed spec, it will create it for me. So then I can create the file manually. Also, what can I do is actually just prepare it myself. Let's say I know at this point of time it's working. So say just fixed. And so I just do it once to just have kind of reference file. Okay, this didn't work. But <laughs> yeah, demo gods, they always against me. But anyway, so this, this helps you to group the group the fixture files in, in directories. So it's not everything, let's say in the in the package level. So what else can be stored as a as a fixture? For example, you have some data about the conference. You have your conference system, and you have a list of speakers, you have a list of sessions, and this is probably what you can get from the, your backend, your SPA application. So it's kind of normalized. So you can see a list of speakers. There's me, there's the company bio. There's a list of sessions with the speakers, but the speaker is only the name. The session is also the name only here. And let's say you want to run some test. This will be your test data, and you want to lo load it in your system. And the data could be you know, pretty complex. It could actually span like multiple uh, persistence, uh, ways of persistence, like DynamoDB, GORM. It could be just, I don't know, something different. So there's another tool, which is called Drew. And it does exactly what you want. What do you need in the situation? You just tell me, okay, I have this conference JSON. I just grab it from my production system or just grab it, grab it from my test system. And I want to load it somewhere. It could be memory, it could be actually like temporary database. And okay, so what's in the root of the JSON? It's a conference and map it for me. So you could do you know, like a lot, lot, lot more mapping. But for the situation, just map it to conference. Uh, when you load it, let's try to run it. Oh, I expect hello. So you load it and just ask Drew to give you the conference. So it does have a, the list of speakers loaded. It does have a list of sessions. And you can see the first speaker is me. The speaker of the first session is also me. So let's just prove it. And the point is that the speakers, the sessions, and the list of speakers in the session is actually pointing to the very same object. <coughs> it is able to do some kind of magic, say, okay, this is the, one ma the single object. 
So if you use, it comes with several implementation for GORM, for example, or for DynamoDB. So in that case, it uses simply the ID, so like GORM ID or DynamoDB keys. But if it's just, you know, plain old Groovy objects, it uses kind of magic, so it matches the property ID if it's present, or it matches name. So this is how this, how this work. Okay, so. So probably already figure out that I really like DSLs. So this is also rever the previous example. So y again, spin up the the Erzat server, the fake HTTP server, and I want to show you this tool called Gru, which using which you can basically test an HTTP endpoint. So it 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 does have a clients for Rails, Spring MVC. Uh, a Amazon API gateway proxies, but you can use it with like any HTTP requests, and this is exactly it. So it was actually inspired by by Erzit, the, the DSL. So you can see it pretty matches, like so. So what I want to test, I say okay, test that if I issue the GET request to the URL hello, expect. There will be the text, hello world. <coughs> and you know, it, have it has kind of implicit assertion, for example, that by default the status should be 200. So if I change this, can I change it? It fails because by default it expects 200. So it's it does have a reasonable default. And other thing which is included in in Gru is this useful library called JSON Unit. So this is very similar. You can see it's again using fixed to read the content of the of the expected file. Oh, sorry, for the to return from my results. And this is part of part of Gru. It's basically using the same convention convention. So you can see this is actual and expected file sitting in JSON unit with Gru spec, which is the name of this class. And if I run it, It will on fail on purpose. So this is what you can see that it expected that this node is supposed to be me and it was you know Dracula. But whatever. But it's not it's not the point is that it's using this tool called uh, JSON unit. So it's not a text. It's not, you know, like text comparison because if you compare to JSON files by, you know, just using the text comparison, it fails because there could be, you know, like different new lines. There could be just we can actually take a look. So actual, if I take a look in here, you can see they are very different. You know, it's. So if we just do a text comparison, it would fail because, you know, speakers goes after session in this one, speakers go in front of sessions. And there's the different way how to, how to order the properties, but it still found the, the, the good difference. Also what it, what can you use in here is some placeholders and there are a couple of very useful, for example, for timestamps because, you know, timestamp changes all the time. But I just 
try something more simple. I wish me luck I can remember this. So let's say that the name could be any any string. Not again. And I think I misspelled something. So what we can do, I say hello to my to my kids. And this is the documentation from GRU, which also includes some of the basic basic documentation for document documentation for JSON unit. So there is, as I said, the most useful for me, for example, is the timestamp because you know every call you just get generated a different timestamp. Yeah, now it passes. So yeah, if you don't know, just go to docs. Cool. So this is this I found this very useful when just you know, testing any any JSON JSON responses. So. This is going to be a very brief one, so I'm not sure how many times you try to mock the environment variables, for example, in Java. So this is the um, library called system rules, very which helps you to mock the many, many things which are very difficult to mock otherwise. So it basically rewrites the system libraries using reflection, and it's kind of magic, but if you really need to go this way, this is a library you can use. And what else? One very useful. As at uh, um, okay, so whoever left a to do comment in a uh, in uh, code base, you are not recorded. Just me, so you can just raise your hands safely. So <coughs> yeah, I did this as well. <laughs> and the point is, the point of to-do is just to be forgotten. So we just make a to-do list, and okay. So let's say, okay, this code, delete it when it's not needed, and when it is, who cares? So this is a very simple groovy AST transformation, who ju which just says, okay, no, you can't do it. You have to, you have to take an action. Okay. Just have something to run. Okay, hello. It's not that visible, but it printed hello. Okay, so some made a chance. So this should be fixed already nearly a year ago. Let's try to run it again. Okay. Can't zoom this one, but it says exactly what's in the description. Don't keep this class for too long. So actually, if the if the date is you know like if date expires, it stops you from compilation. It's a bit clever. So we when we started to use this, the main issue was that it time to time breaks the the CI server. You are on the vacation. You leave it there. So now the current version actually skips the error if it's on the CI server. So it will break locally to the to the to the to the you know developers, but it won't break your build. For example, if you want to restart it or whatever. So what you can do, you can just you know this is the full full syntax. Normally you will just use the syntax with dashes, which means so six one. And the rest is just some metadata. The owner is just, you know, just some metadata to say, okay, I've created this, so if it breaks on your machine, just ask me, okay, have you already fixed it? Should I delete it or what should I do? 
Okay, I'll have the 2018. And this is the description shown in D-Logs in when the compilation fails. Okay. Formats. Yeah, I can do it. I just so this was the first one which is for production. The other one is also for production. It could span uh, 50 minutes. And maybe you are already familiar with that one, with this one. So it's a spreadsheet builder. So if you want to build an Excel file, you know, better than just CSV export, you can use this library. And uh, again, it's in some DSL. Okay, just build me some worksheet. You can define styles, and you have a one sheet sessions with, with the headers. And you just export the conference. So if you have this conference, you can export it as a as Excel, so the attendees can send it to their managers because they only read Excel files. And how does this work? just exports it with the with the filter with log header and it's basically painless and it works for excel and there is the there is the rc release candidate which can sort of work with google google docs as well and also it's not the just the export but as i said i'm a testing guy so it also helps you to to verify the exported file, or maybe if you just you know import random Excel file into your system, it also has a spreadsheet criteria, so you can read the file, and for example, query by name of the sheet, <laughs> by the row number, whatever, or by value, by even by styles. So there is also comes with the reading part, with the import part, and I think that's all. So I'm ready for any questions. If yeah, sure, Shimon. Create, create, ignore until. Ignore until. Yeah, like yeah, so you, because it's pretty similar to just remember me, you show. So you can ignore a specific test case until some period of time. So you cannot keep it ignored that long. Yeah, that's that's a good one, but the point is it's that's one of the two things which is also for production code. So this remember annotation you can use in your production code. And I believe it is take a look. You can apply it everywhere. And the retention is only source so it's only applied during the compilation, so it's not even exported with the production code. So you can use it, you know, in a production code, in test code, whatever you want. Sure. Any other question? Cool. So if you if you like the DSLs, I'm running the DSL workshop tomorrow. You're welcome to to attend. And yeah, see you around. Thank you.